Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. We coach owners of cleaning companies all the time on every, anything and everything you need to grow your cleaning company. If that's you, if you're committed to growing your cleaning, cleaning company, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. You will find everything you need to get the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you've got any questions you'd like us to answer on the show, feedback, any of that good stuff, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat at growmycleaningcompany.com or just give us a call, 480-648-5149. You can apply to be on the show. Give us some feedback. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. That said today we're ch- chatting with Teresa Gaskins from glass <laughs> you are a mouthful sister Teresa Gaskins from Gaskins <laughs> Cleaning Services Gaskins Cleaning Services serves the Seattle Puget Sound uh, Washington area with both residential and commercial cleaning services if you want to reach out to Teresa you can get a hold of her at gasket www.gaskinscleaningservices.com Teresa so glad to have you say hello to cleaning nation Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mike, so much for having me on today. My pleasure. And I would love to, uh, we got to chat a little bit before we hit record. So I got to know you, but I'd love to have Cleaning Nation get a chance to get to know you a little better. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you have a husband, kids, dog, goldfish, where do you live? What do you do for fun? Give us a a little bit of the life and times of the Gaskins clan. Yeah, well, um, I've been doing this since 1996, so it's been a long time. I am actually single, and I have animals. I love animals, and when I'm not working, I like to go camping. And um, and I live in Seattle, Washington. Beautiful. What kind of animals you got? I'm a big nerd when it comes to um, pets. Well, I have little dogs, and then I have two cats and a bird. So single, but with a house full. It sounds like. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I have a I have a um, boyfriend, but not married. Okay, fantastic. Uh, well, or fantastic, or I'm sorry, depending on the fellow. <laughs> no, no, no. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. It's okay. a great relationship. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. cool. Congratulations on that. Um, so, how did you get into the, Thank you. the cleaning business, young lady? Well, um, I basically, I've always been an entrepreneur. Before I started this, I uh, ran a document preparation business where it was mostly like a typing service where I um, typed up people's um, uncontested divorce papers and then also Chapter 7 bankruptcy. And then I would file them with the courts. And then also I did a little bit of process serving. And I found that that really wasn't uh, a repeat enough business for me. It was very slow, just not enough income. And, and so then I um, got a job with um, another cleaning service and tried that out for a while, wanted to learn how the business ran, how they did it, and um, just didn't like the way they were running it. Um, they were going in a, a team of like three and in and out of four houses a day, and it wasn't really personal. So I wanted to to, ha- to start my own and, and make it kind of personal. Um, so now I have a family and, and friends type business. Okay, awesome. That is that's a cool. I, I think you may be the first process server turned cleaning company <laughs> owner we've had on the show. So congratulations to uh, for that honor. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that said, let's uh, let's see if we can't help you get where you want to go a little faster. How can I help you today? Well, um, I am, I'm the owner, but I'm also um, one of the cleaners going out to, you know, residential houses Monday through Friday and then um, cleaning small offices on Sunday. Um, and, you know, I have other employees where we're, we have like uh, five and under employees, but I want to transition out of being one of the cleaners to running my business I mean, even though I run my business and I'm the cleaner, it's very difficult, <laughs> very time consuming. And so basically, I'm just want to know how to transition. I'm a little bit scared 
um, to do that because a lot of my customers know me and they know my face when I go in there. Um, most pe- most customers are home, some aren't, um, so that's fine. But and then um, also I'm worried about if, can I afford it? You know, because the income that I'm making now by being the cleaner would go down um, at first while I get another um, employee um, and then grow it from there. Okay. So first of all, that was a mouthful. Sounds like there's a lot going on, which is awesome. I'm excited to unpack this with you and our audience. So let me repeat back what I thought I heard you say. So I make sure I don't start coaching on one thing, but you'd like help on another. Uh, I hear you saying you've been doing this for 20 years. You've built up a team Mm -hmm. of three or four or five, depending on the month, I'm sure. Mm -hmm, And, mm -hmm. but you're one of those team and you'd like to have it where you're making as much or more income than you're making now, but you've got that team of three or four or five or 10 or however many you want, but you are not Mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. of them. You are an owner of a business, not a cleaner. That's got some friends helping that you pay kind of a gig. Yeah, they're all employees. I mean, it's not like it's a, I mean, this is a real business. Um, I consider it, I've always treated it like a business, even though I've been in Run, you know, as a cleaner, I treat my business very serious as a business. So, yeah, that's exactly what. What? Okay, and that's a key. Dis- about that. That's a key distinction I, I want to make. Um, I I totally get what you're saying. Like, I don't want a, you know, me and a bunch of friends. I want to be a real business. But mm-hmm. I I gotta encourage you. If you're a mechanic and you're turning wrenches, or you quote unquote own a hair salon mm-hmm. and you're cutting hair, you are not a business owner. You're self employed, and you've got some help and some other things. But my definition of mm-hmm. self-employed that served me for the last 20 years is for me to be self-employed, I have to own an asset, whether it's real estate or business or stocks that creates income and generates income, whether I'm there or not there. So if I have to be there to make it work, you've just got a fancy job, right? But if you stop showing up and everything mm-hmm. comes, you know, the wheels fall off and the income stops coming in because you're sick or sick of working or whatever the case may be, that and again, and I'm I'm not the only one, but you know, my definition would be it's got to work without you. So that's why I was kind of picking at you, not to you make you feel bad, but just to make that clear line in the sand of if you got to be there and you got to perform the work that you do, um, you know, I'm going to put you back in that self-employed thing. So what I hear you saying is you don't want to be self-employed. You want to have a business owner that business runs and makes money with or without you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I totally get their employees. They may or may not be friends. I wasn't suggesting that you don't have employees so much as if you're still mm-hmm. doing the cleaning or the bulk of the cleaning or a lot of the cleaning, those mm-hmm. employees are just window dressing until they get to the point where they clean, they perform the work that you do, and you work on your business and they work in your business. That's the, sh- that's the mm-hmm. shift I hear you making. And the fear I hear you saying is my income will go down and my customers will revolt. Is that Am I putting words in your mouth or are we on the same page? Yeah, I'm worried about, you know, possibly losing some of my customers. And then how do I transition? Do I do I hire somebody? Do they do I bring them with me? Um, Do I um, so they see their face um, and then eventually let them go on their own? I mean, you know, without losing many customers. (laughs) Okay. So first of all, let me ask you a couple questions just so I make sure I give uh, coaching that's relevant to you in your situation. Um, is the uh-huh. money that you earn from your cleaning company, is that what you use to pay bills and eat? Or do you have any sort of flexibility if your income does go down uh, for a time? Is that okay? Or is that something that would be catastrophic in your life? Oh, no, I've got I've got money set aside for, you know, things like that. So okay. no, this is the, the yeah. Okay. So it's a, yeah. obviously that doesn't mean that it's it's going to be fun and you're looking forward to having your income change, but it's it's okay if that happens for a time being for a specific reason and it ultimately goes up. That's something that wouldn't bring pain and suffering to your life. Uh, just maybe a little bit of discomfort. Right, right. Okay, good. So there's a couple issues. The first issue is it's, and I get this all the time. So please don't hear me beating you up or saying, man, everyone else is so smart and you're missing it, sister. Cause that's not the case. This is very common. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I get that a lot, <laughs> which is people get into their business and they, and that's why I always start with how'd you get in? Cause they just wander in and they don't really know what it is exactly that they want or why they're in this business or what goals they, how mm-hmm. they want this business to serve their life. Um, or if they do, mm-hmm. they forget really quickly when people are yelling at them and they got bills to pay and kind of day to day life interrupt. So that's why I'm so passionate about this coaching, whether it's on the podcast or what I do, you know, with my private customers is it's that encouragement and that ability to take a step back and go, let's really check out what this business is about. So let me just set a foundation and then I'll answer your question. 
the foundation is, and I, gosh, I probably give this speech once a week, and I don't even know if I've given it on the podcast yet, so I'm glad that you asked this question. <laughs> the foundation always has to be, this business is here to serve you. Your customers are there to serve the business, and the business serves you. If and when it stops serving you, and you're serving it, which I get all the time. People are like, I don't have a life. I don't have a, a miserable, this thing just, and I'm not saying that's you, but I, we get that. Um, okay. We got a problem. So right from the foundation, those customers, if they have to have you, but you, that's not what you want, they got to go. That's okay. And I'm not saying we're going to fire them or we're going to try and make them go, but if and when they do, because that's absolutely a deal breaker for them, that's fine, right? Because we've got to start with why did you get in this business and what do you want this business to do with you? So let's do that. Tell me a little bit about perfect world, why, what your cleaning business, if I just gave you a magic wand and said, wave it, Teresa, this thing is whatever you want, what would that look like? How would you, um, how would this business serve you? You know, what would you do? How many hours would you work? What would you be doing? Tell me a little bit about that. And then we'll figure out a way to create that for real. Well, I think it would be where I would not be a cleaner and I would be able to put more time into, um, growing my business, you know, getting more, client customers, um, hiring more people, um, just making a little bit, um, bigger. Okay. So it sounds like what you want to do is you're not interested in cleaning. You're cleaning. And again, I'm going to put a lot of words into your mouth so you can either say, yes, yes, that's it. Or if I miss the, if I miss the mark, then you can, you, we can correct course. But I hear you saying you don't really want to clean. You feel like you have to clean so your customers don't revolt and you can continue the, the money that you're making, but you have a strong preference to understanding that you can't make real money cleaning. You got to, you can only make real money selling customers and getting accounts and creating systems and really building an actual business. That's correct. Because I've been doing it for 19 years and it's time for a break. Oh my, it was time for a break <laughs> you know? five years ago or 15 years ago. sister. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I started there is that's the first thing, right? Because there's got to be that commitment to, I don't want to do this anymore. Cause I'll mm -hmm. tell you, it's easier for the first month to just do what you've done, right? It's harder to kind of make that change and step out and take a little bit of a risk emotionally and kind of step out of your safe spot of, I know I can do what I'm doing right now and it's working. You know, it's kind of that fear of the unknown. So I've got to make sure that before I start telling you how to do it, that you're like, yeah, I'm committed. And if things change a little and if the income goes up or down or the customer's you know, some feathers get ruffled. That's okay. Because mm -hmm. I think so far I've been hearing the purpose of this business is to make your customers happy and they have to be happy. And, um, whatever that costs, if that means you have to work, then you'll work. And we need to change that from no, the purpose of this business business is to give you freedom. And, you know, there's obviously hundreds, if not thousands of people out there owning cleaning companies that don't have to work in them every day. So it's possible. It's just a matter of saying this is a priority and a commitment and I'm going to do things differently if that's what it takes to, to get to that point in my life. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that before I start giving you all sorts of crazy things to do. Yep. That's exactly. Okay, cool. So the first thing is uh, we got to get that customer head trash out of that's just made up stuff, right? Oh my gosh, if I leave, the customers are going to hate me. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I, nine times out of 10, it's fear is the problem and it's not a reality. But we got to get you to the point mentally where you just don't care. You say, hey, my goal, you know, I'm, I've been for 20 years, I've been a business, I've been a cleaner and I've got some other cleaners around me, but it's enough. I got to be a business owner and I'll do whatever I it takes. And if I have to burn this uh, job I've got to the ground to, to rise up a, uh, a business that I own that works independently of me, then that's what I'll do. And I don't think we're going to have to do that, but I need to get you that place where you're okay with that. If and when someone does freak out or give you emotional consequences or quit or whatever, you go, fine, I don't care. The goal wasn't to clean this chick's house until I die or this man or whoever your customer's <laughs> house till I die. The goal is to build a business and you got to break a couple eggs and make right. an omelet. That's how it goes. So if you got to be kind of from today on go, I'm going to, I'll burn that thing to the ground. I'll never again clean a toilet and whatever that costs, I'll pay the price. And I'm being really uh, <laughs> dramatic. It won't cost that much, but I want you to be in that space. Um, so the fear doesn't stop you from doing anything. Is that okay? Oh, I hear what you're saying. Okay. So the biggest thing, and I've used this example a couple of times, but it's huge. The last business I had was a car dealership. Um, and we had, you know, detailers and lot attendants and mechanics and salespeople and finance people. And, you know, just there's people running around everywhere. Um, and the example I like to use is the thing that always ran the best that I never had to worry about was the auto repair shop. Because I, man, you, the last guy you want working on your car is me. I will break myself and your car and maybe <laughs> injure others around me. It's a bad scene. Um, but I never <laughs> had a problem with that because I never was tempted 
if someone came in and they need their oil change or their brakes done or their tire, whatever, or we bought a car that needed, you know, any sort of repair that needed, you know, we had a hundred cars running around. So there's a lot of cars getting repaired. I never had to worry about, well, I better go out there and do it. Right. Because I knew that I couldn't. So I was forced to hire people to do that. And before that, I had a construction company. Again, the last thing you want to do is give me power tools for crying out loud. So uh, if you're a, a Michael Gerber fan, the E-Myth, he talks about the worst thing for a mechanic to do is open an auto repair shop because he's going to think that's the job. That's the work is is repairing cars or uh, a barber to open a barber shop because he's going to think that's the job. A business owner wants to do something he can't do, so he's forced to be a true business owner. The one problem with cleaning is a lot of people get into it because we figure I can do that, right? I can't rebuild the transmission and I can't you know, legally do this guy's taxes. So I can't open those businesses, but I can clean. So I'll open a cleaning company. The problem is we start off handicapped right off the bat because we've got this perfect employee always at the ready that will never, you know, call in sick or not show up at the last minute or curse at a customer or do anything wrong. So we, we come to depend on that employee, which is a problem because when that employee wants to go take a vacation or not work for a second, we're stuck because it's us, right? And then if that employee is busy building a business, he can't ever be bu- building a business because he or she's constantly cleaning and 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 doing that sort of stuff. So we've got to move that mind shift of I'm not in the business of cleaning. I'm in the business of attracting and managing cleaning customers and fulfilling that, right? So your, your job moves okay. from I'm a cleaner to I create systems that attract customers and I attract, I create systems that attract prospective employees and I manage those customers' employees in such a way that creates a profit that I keep. And I'm going so, so fast. But does that all make sense? Oh, yeah. It makes perfect sense. Okay. So half of it, actually probably 70, 80% of it is just deciding. I'll never clean again. And again, I'm not saying you do that tomorrow, but you decide today, 30 days from now, 15 mm-hmm. days from now, 45 days from now will be the last time I clean. And you start, and you start planning. Um, and I've already yacked long enough. So as, as far as the, the big thing that we've covered is you got to put the customers mentally in their place. Their place is to serve your business, to serve you, if and when they stop doing mm-hmm. that. You don't need them anymore. So if a customer needs you personally to clean, it's the wrong customer, right? You want a customer that understands, hey, I'd rather be at a company that has systems. And if um, Teresa's sick one day, I don't just not get my house cleaned or she doesn't feel well or whatever, my house clean doesn't stop. Teresa's actually creating systems and bringing in employees that are fully trained. And if one gets sick, another one comes in. That's the kind of uh, service I want to be associated with. So you just need to train your customers or attract the right customers that want the service that you want to offer. So again, I'm, I'm right. guessing 80% of it's in your mind. They probably really don't care like you think they do. Um, but the 20% that isn't in your mind, they really do care. You got to be willing to go, Hey, if you're looking for Teresa to come clean your house, she doesn't do that anymore. Right? Like me, I don't, you know, I've, I've got people that would probably love me to come fly out to their place and take over their business and make it a multimillion dollar business for them. But I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> it's okay. Mm-hmm. So if, right. if they said, right, well, right. I would be a customer if you do this, I go, I don't, I don't do that. That's not what I do. That's fine. Right. Because I'm very clear on how I, the, the value I want to bring to the world and, and what that requires for my customers. We just got to get you to that same spot. Okay. It sounds like just I just need to get over the fear and just put some systems in place and just do it. <laughs> yes. And on the uh, yeah. and again, we're kind of running long, so I feel like I've given you a lot of uh, conceptual stuff, not as much tactical as I like. But the good thing is we've covered this three or four times uh, in other episodes mm-hmm. with a lot more tactical stuff. And offline, I'll, I'll I'll go in a little more depth with you, just so you don't feel like you got. Uh, I talk too much, you know, philosophical, not enough tactical. But the last thing is you are going to want to check your pricing and we don't have time to go over it now, but you are going to have to go into your pricing mm-hmm. metrics and see there should be enough margin where you can replace yourself with a cleaner and it doesn't hurt your, your company. If you're like, hey, the company doesn't survive unless I personally clean because we need that extra margin to pay bills or to pay my personal bills, there's a, there's a deeper right. problem. So we will have to fix that problem before, which is a margin problem. Um, before we fix the, you're not in it, you know, you've got to be out of it. So I will say before you do this, you got to figure out why the company is so lean and it should be a matter of, well, I just hired two more employees to do what I'm doing. Um, and I, I spend my time getting more accounts and that's how we cover the costs of my, you know, anytime you depend on the owner for free labor, there's, that's, Mm -hmm. that's, that's a red flag that there's an issue. So that is something that we'd want to dive into. Okay, right. that sounds great. Before we hit the lightning round, any questions or thoughts or anything else you need before we turn turn the tables and let you answer a couple questions in the lightning round? No, I think you did a great job. All right, hopefully I did because, again, I felt that was really uh, philosophical, which is important, <laughs> but I, I like giving tactical as well. All right, let's hit the lightning round. Give me, uh, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received that maybe could benefit Cleaning Nation here? 
Well, um, I was given some great advice from a college professor when I was uh, taking a class um, in project management. And the advice was um, being in business for yourself you may at times need to have uh, a skin like an alligator <laughs> because you might not always hear from people what a good job you're doing because most people, it seems like they're so focused on what you're not doing right than what you are. <laughs> and so I, th I got the message um, from that advice is that, that don't take anything personally. Just, um, you know, and I used to take so many things personally. That is such good advice. It is so true. And I would say that goes double on the cleaning business. So, so rarely do people call us and yeah. tell us what a great job we did, but a hundred percent of the time, uh, we're going to get the call when they don't feel like we did a good job. So that's exactly. Yeah. Take that as encouragement, cleaning nation. All right. Question two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business so we can steer clear? I think the biggest mistake that I made, um, is doing too many cleaning tasks that I normally would not have done if I had a defined scope of work in place that I told my co customers, you know, what I did. Like, for example, like, you know, washing large amounts of dishes and washing and drying and folding clothes, which were more of what housekeepers do than what house cleaning uh, companies do. Um, and because I strictly wanted to be a house cleaning business, and focus on deep cleaning rather than doing housekeeping duties. And yes. so when they like my customers asked me to do all these things, I just did it. You know, <laughs> that'll that'll you that will eat your lunch <laughs> faster than a lot of things. In exactly. Business. Yeah. All right. Great feedback. Exactly. Last question: yeah. What is one thing owners of cleaning companies or audience can put into practice today that will improve their life or their business? I think that would be making sure that you're making your business fun and a place that your employees want to work at. I mean, in the cleaning business, it's so important um, to change up the routine within your teams. I would say maybe on a weekly basis so that they're not doing the same task over and over where their jobs could get stale or boring, you know, um, by going to the same customer's house on a continuing basis. You know, like if one of your employees always cleans the bathroom, have them maybe switch and clean the kitchen or the floors by rotating, you know, duties. Um, so many times we go into the same place every single week or every two weeks and we do the same tasks and it could, you know, you gotta, you gotta have fun, you, you know, otherwise it's just going to get so boring. <laughs> yeah. You could, yeah, it's, it's, it is, uh, it is tougher than it looks, so to speak, to do, do the job of a cleaner. All right. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Uh, Teresa, I love your passion and your kind of background, all the stuff that you kind of brought to the table. Thank you for bringing that to light. I appreciate you. I know cleaning nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Teresa's show notes page and discover everything you need to grow your cleaning company you and get it all at growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.